When the sun goes down, New Orleans is just waking up. Bright and colorful lights push aside the blackness of night. The brilliant lamps of Louisiana glass artist Mark Rosenbaum also shatter the darkness. But unlike the neon of the French Quarter, they shine with an ethereal beauty. Glass has life to it. This New Orleans glass blower swirls the colors of Mardi Gras in his vases and lamps. Yet the parade of color is never gaudy or too loud. Glass first caught Mark's attention 24 years ago while he was at the Tyler School of Art in Philadelphia. I was in a ceramics program because I had done some ceramics in high school and glass blowing was part of the ceramics program. The glass studio was open all night and you would just watch and just the magic of the blowing glass, you watch these people create these things and it looked like they were having a good time doing it. It was just, it was real cool. It was so cool, it was hot. And Mark's passion for glass hasn't cooled since. Mark is making one of his innovative pieces, a lamp which will feature both a rippling glass lampshade and an elegant glass base. He begins by making the shade, collecting the molten glass he needs from a furnace which keeps the glass at 2100 degrees Fahrenheit. Although the glass looks yellow, it's actually clear glass, which is just extremely hot. With every dip into the vat, Mark collects what's called a gather. He dips the gather in a container holding colored bits of glass called frit. The tiny bits of glass melt and will eventually create swirling blues and greens in the shade. The glass chips will only stick to the hot glass. So each layer has to be melted in so that you can get a layer on top of it. Mark shapes the glass by rolling it on what's called a marver. And what I'm going to do is blow my initial bubble into it. Hot air takes up more room than cold air. So it has to go somewhere so it presses against the glass and makes a bubble and expands. Next, Mark will create the swirls he wants in his lampshade. He pinches the glass with what look like giant tweezers called jacks. The indentations will force the colors to curve and whirl in the shade. I'm reheating the whole piece so that, again, we can get rid of the ridges that I just created so that when I gather my last layer on top of the glass, I won't trap any air bubbles. Now Mark is ready to force more air into the center of the piece. Another puff of air. Another trip to the furnace for more glass. And Mark is ready to further shape the shade with a wet wooden paddle called a block. The glass is actually not really touching the fruit wood. What it's doing is riding on a layer of steam. Mark's assistant, Junior Suzuki, blows through the pipe forcing the piece to enlarge more. As she blows, Mark smooths the glass using wet material. This fabric doesn't burn, it just rides on a layer of steam. Stop. When the piece is big enough, Mark creates a groove in the glass with his jacks. This is necking the piece. We're cutting the neck in where we're, it's gonna come off of the pipe. Blow. It's difficult to manipulate because Mark can't grab the pipe close to the glass orb, which would make it easier to balance, but that would burn his hand. The shaping is done on the lamp now. And what we're gonna do is put a hole in the bottom and flare it out to make the bottom of the lampshade. For this, Mark needs localized heat, so he turns to an oxypropane torch. It burns a hole into the glass ball. Mark pries open the hole with glass tweezers. To complete the edge, he adds a small tendril of hot glass around the rim called a lip wrap. And this just gives a nice ending to the form, I think. 
And then comes the final move in this whirling dance, where Mark must not spin his fragile partner too hard. It's exciting. You slip up and the piece is gone. I mean, you're on the edge the whole time. It's kind of an adrenaline rush where you're making this piece and you're moving it back and forth and shaping it and it's growing and it's changing shape and whatever and it's doing what you want it to do and it's, it's kind of a rush being able to just watch this creation in front of you. With a final tap, the lovely rippling shade is released from the pipe and placed into the annealing oven where it will cool slowly overnight. An old movie theater in New Orleans has a new act on the marquee. The silver screen has been replaced by show-stopping glass blowing. Glass artist Mark Rosenbaum is making the base of a glass lamp in his studio in Louisiana, a former movie theater. Now it's a different kind of show. Just as he did when he created the lampshade, Mark makes repeated trips to the furnace to collect layer upon layer of molten glass. The pipe he collects the glass onto is a tube that his assistant, Junior Suzuki, blows air through. The air bubble inside the glass grows larger with every puff. What I'm gonna do next is heat up just the bottom half of the piece and swing it and elongate it. To create the oblong shape he wants, Mark spins the pipe like a majorette might spin a baton. The centrifugal force elongates the glass. Mark rotates the base in a V-block. This lengthens the base and makes it symmetrical. Once the base is long enough, Mark heats it with an oxypropane torch, burning a hole in what will become the bottom of the lamp base. Junior brings a small dab of glass to Mark so he can add a decorative border to the bottom. Mark then flares the bottom, pushing the glass out with his wooden jacks and a block. Junior places the base into the annealing oven. The annealing oven is about 900 degrees, and then they'll slowly cool overnight to where in the morning we can take the pieces out and work on them. The following day, the lampshade and base are ready to assemble. Mark uses grinding wheels with tiny bits of diamonds in them to smooth the glass. Running water keeps the glass cool so it won't crack as Mark removes the rough edges. Once Mark installs the electrical components, the lamp shines brightly. A swirling landscape of blues and greens, reminding the viewer of both the mysteries of the ocean and the limitless scope of the sky. When it's off, it's reflected light. The light is bouncing off of the piece and you're catching that in your eye. When you turn the light on, it's transmitted light and you're seeing a different color because you're seeing the inside color. Glass and light play together, each teasing the other. Depending on the moment, the combination is cool and sophisticated or warm and inviting. Whatever the mood, there is magic when glass and light come together in Mark Rosenbaum's work.